How do dreamers, thought leaders, paradigm shifters change the world? They have to ask themselves this one question. Am I willing to chase my dreams? If you want to know how to push the boundaries of your influence, impact the world, and live out your God-given dreams, then this is the podcast for you. Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen, to the Passion and Prestige podcast. I am your host, world changer, dream chaser, and all around nice guy, Teron Nolan. Today, I want to know which God you are serving. Is it the God you think he is or the God who he says he is? So let's talk about it. What would it look like to believe that God is pleased with you? That he is not criticizing and critiquing your every move? That his love for you is maxed out and will always be maxed out? Nothing can or will ever change that. Do you believe it? I lived for decades not believing this truth. I've searched tirelessly for a treasure that was all around me. In fact, it was inside of me. Like a lost explorer who wastes years after years digging for gold, but never realizing that his shovel is made of the purest gold ever. The same thing he has been searching for all his life, God had given him right in his hands. God's love is yours. His acceptance is yours. His pleasure is yours. So stop searching. Rest in his comfort, trusting that he is not criticizing and critiquing your every move. When I was in college, I had an art instructor that was well known for being a tyrannical, crazy teacher. He was a bear of a man who ruled the art department at Fresno State like a god. He wielded his power and flaunted his mighty hand. One call from this professor could create a lucrative career out of thin air or send your design aspirations and future goals to a lonely purgatory of perpetual damnation. This dude was the real deal. We all feared him. And he knew it and loved it. I don't know if you remember back to the Avengers movie in 2012. Captain America has this amazing quote. You know the one where he's talking about Thor, the god of thunder? Thor has just arrived on Earth, and it was up to Captain America to contain the threat by confronting him. Before jumping into action, Captain America was told that he was going to be challenging a god. Without missing a beat, Captain America delivers one of the smoothest lines I have ever heard. He says in his Captain America voice, there's only one God, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't look like that. Oh, yeah. Yep, that did it. I wish I would have had the gumption back in college while sitting in that professor's class to stand up and say those exact same words. Excuse me, sir. There's only one God, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't look like you. I I know I would have said it with the fear and trembling, but I didn't. I cowered under his mighty critique and criticism. Fridays were the worst days of them all. A day that was universally agreed on for ages as being the best day of the week. This professor had trapped it and held it hostage until it bent to his every wish. Fridays were hell. Every Friday was a gallery day. A time when the students would present our gifts to the Lord of the discussion hall. If your gift was pleasing to him, then you were allowed to leave with your dignity still intact. But if your gift was displeasing, a negative aroma in his presence, then may he have mercy on your soul. 
Each student would go up to the board one by one and hang up their art project that they had spent hours working on. The professor would walk up to the board holding a terrifying red marker. Now, usually, I'm not afraid by one red marker. I mean, there's no reason to freak out. But when this professor held that marker in his hand, it transformed into Darth Vader's lightsaber real quick. With the speed and precision, the professor would swing and hack at our art projects the way that a butcher chops up slices of meat. After 15 minutes of red ink flying and a list of every design flaw he could point out, our projects, along with our self-confidence, was left marked up and barely hanging on. He had finally got to mine. After the sixth project, I assumed that he would need to rest. But oh no, his eyes were locked in on my work of art and I knew that my day of judgment had arrived. Most people say art is subjective. You know, the whole beauty is in the eye of the beholder thing. I can tell you with 100% confidence that according to the Fresno State's art department, Beauty was whatever this professor said it was. There was no argument, no discussion. His word was law. The professor, who shall remain nameless, walked up to my project, veins bulging from his neck and eyes fire-like. He was clearly displeased with the lack of competence in the classroom and was ready to take out all of his fury on me. At this moment, I had two options. I could beg for mercy and repent for all of my designing flaws, or I could stand there scared and completely exposed. He looked at my sad example of a project, growled back at me, and then uncapped his lightsaber. To say he was displeased would be the understatement of a lifetime. He went berserk. I'm talking Old Testament fire and brimstone. If F-bombs were nukes, he would have dropped enough to completely destroy the world. Twice. When he was finished with his deluge of cuss words and criticism, the classroom was left ghost quiet. The professor threw down his lightsaber and exited out of the classroom. That was one of the most mortifying days of my life. Even though it was a traumatic moment in my college experience, it taught me a life-freeing lesson. That God, the one true God, is greatly pleased with me. And nothing will ever change that. I'm thankful for that professor. Because he showed me the exact opposite of God's character. When he could have just told me. I walked out of that classroom with a failed assignment and a bruised confidence, but more importantly, with an unbreakable faith in a God who is completely and deeply pleased with who I am. Maybe you were like me and lived much of your life trying to earn the love from a God you viewed as ready to criticize and critique your every mistake. If that's you, I'm here to tell you that that is not God. He sees you for who you are and loves you for who you are. You can never earn more of his love or lose any of his love. He's crazy about you. And when you mess up, because you will, we all do, his love never changes. It's time to run out of that classroom with the image Professor God you created. God is not like that. No red marker, no F-bombs, no shame-filled criticism. Just freedom and love. Now I'm going to end this episode the way I end every single episode with these powerful, powerful words. Chase your dreams until the dreams you chase become a reality. Go change the world. And remember, God is deeply pleased with you. So now that you're part of the Passion and Prestige tribe, I want to know what you think. 
I love hearing from my listeners. So if you wouldn't mind taking a screenshot of you listening to this podcast and tag us at Passion and Prestige on Instagram. And don't forget to go into your podcast app, subscribe, and leave us a five-star review and a five-star rating. This helps us reach way more people. Passion and Prestige Tribe, thank you so much. I will see you next week. And remember, chase your dreams until the dreams you chased become reality. Go change the world. They just want to knock you off the top. But I ain't going to drop till I say so. Till I say so. Because I say.